The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Kevin. Welcome back. All right, so uh, I know I told you guys that we were going to get started with a new topic, future engineering, but um, I guess that's not going to happen because <clears throat> I don't think we, uh, I don't have, I, don't, I definitely don't have that lecture yet. So um, instead, uh, it kind of works out well because we left, I left you off in a, not a very great spot with Unity. Um, we were having a lot of troubles last time, and so I wanted to correct that. Um, and so we're going to spend today just kind of putting some finishing touches on this Unity game project that we were uh, designing last time, the Rollerball. Um, as you can see, probably from the colors here, um, that they're all the same color. Uh, also, they actually are all the same object. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how you can do that. Um, and we, it was just a little tiny, tiny difference that we didn't do last time. Um, also, uh, the way I found the answer was by going to Unity documentation. And I, we knew that it was called a prefab, so I googled Unity documentation prefab and came straight to this page where uh, the answer is a couple paragraphs in right here. Um, how to create it, go to Asset, Create Prefab, and then drag an object from the scene into the empty prefab object asset that appears. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of my, well, almost all of my prizes. Uh, let's see, all of my, my copies. Let's see, down here. I'll give you guys a chance to open your Unity Rollerball project up. Um, <clears throat> And if you're you're still having problems with that uh, project, then uh, we'll go ahead and troubleshoot those in the beginning here now too, um, so that you, your your scripts work where you can uh, the, the prizes will disappear when you hit them. So uh, uh, what we didn't do, well, what we did do last time was we create created this prefab folder in our assets. Uh, when we go into it, what we didn't do is uh, right-click create prefab. And when you do that, kind of like creating material or creating a script, something like that, um, gives you this empty prefab object. Um, I'll call it prize cube and so within here this this asset we have um, let's see we have two left which is what's left prize cube prize okay I'm gonna delete that one so <clears throat> we're left with this we're back with one cube and I'll go ahead and delete this as well so, um, so if you go ahead and you can feel free, try to, to keep the one cube that has uh, anything attached. Remember, we tagged things. Um, we, uh, what did we do here? Um, we added this uh, cube rotate script. Um, so, and and we have a material, <coughs> the uh, prize cube material attached here, uh, or linked to it. Yep. So uh, try to keep one of your cubes that has a little more programming attached to it. Um, for me, I kept the one that was in prize cubes here. And so if you go into this prefab object, then all you have to do from here. Or from here, you just click and drag the object right onto, well, okay, we'll go from here. Drag it straight onto this empty white prefab prize cube. 
And then you'll see that this, this object changes colors. And what that means is that this, is, this now is actually a um, recognized as an instance, I guess. So now we can drag in, drag copies of this prefab back onto here. Um, so all we have to do is just keep dragging out as many as we like. And they just keep on uh, duplicating. So if I drag all those right back, then we've got a bunch of prize cubes. Let's see. Actually, I want my numbering system to be okay. right. So I'm gonna do it down. yeah. All right. So now I'm going to highlight all these and just for organization's sake, put them under, put them in here. Okay. Yeah, whatever. They're out of order, but that's fine. So we've got all of our prize cubes, um, you know, according to this one prefab object. Now, if I go in here and assets and click prefab and I change this material, maybe I change it to uh, green. Look at that, they all change all at once. This is the beauty prefab, or this is the magic of prefab objects. I wanna change, make them all bright fuchsia pink. Do that, I wanna make them all green. I'll keep, I'll make them green just to mix it up. So, that didn't take any new programming or coding or anything. That was just, um, all that took was creating this prefab object that we can uh, use to make these all different. Or, I mean, make them all the same. Um, now, if we were to go into any given cube, then all of these are have their own uh, properties that are unique to them, um, and we can change them. If I went in here and changed the material, the color, you know, I changed this one to red. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Did I change the wrong one? Probably not. Huh. Maybe because they all share the same material. Well, <clears throat> if I were to change, you know, different properties, like say it's position 10. Then, or something we could see maybe uh, negative five or something, negative six, negative seven. Let's see these. These all change themselves. Um, so you can change the individual properties. Now, here we're actually changing the property of the material and not which which they all share. So you, that was a bad example for me to pick green because they all share that material. Um, so when I change make a change to this material, it's going to make a change to all of them um, just because they share that material. It's it's like going into this material here and clicking on prize cube and making that change. Um, I can I can make that change here or I can make it in any given instance, but it's it's really just changing the properties of this material. So. Um, does that make sense to you guys? Um, and is do you guys have any questions so that you guys can can duplicate this? Um, I don't know. I mean, I it'd be great if you guys are following along in your own Unity, but uh, I know sometimes that's difficult. So uh, if you could let me know what you're doing, then I'll know uh, whether I should wait for you guys to you know, check in every now and then to make sure you guys are following along, or if you guys are, are watching so that you know how to do this. Um, you know, kind of like where I send you the code and you could do it uh, in your own time. So which, which do you guys prefer? Either way, okay. Well, are you following along right now? 
Yep. Okay. Well, I think that's a good idea to keep on following along because uh, sometimes it's easier to. Well, I I think that I think it would be beneficial to do that. You can you can do whatever you want, but I think it would be good to follow along um, and you know make sure you ask me questions as you have problems. Gabe, are you you good with this so far? Have you gotten this to this prefab to work? He might be having problems with his mic again. Um, I actually haven't heard from him. It's unusual. Gabe, are you there? All right. Well, uh, we'll check. Try to check back in with Gabe in a bit. But uh, since we got through that, that was pretty quick. Um, so. Let's let's add some a game component, uh, more of a game com game like component. I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and show you first that you know because we added this. Uh, Kevin, check with me here too that you're on the same page. Do did all of your prefabs get this inherit this this script and everything to make make it work? Yep. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um. So <clears throat> so it's always good to test out your code every now and then. Um, actually, frequently. Um, so that was just a, a test to verify that you know all of that one cube that we duplicated was the right cube to duplicate, and um, so now we can keep on keep on going. Now that they all work right, work the right way, the way we want. So let's uh, let's keep score. We don't have to keep any make any new. Well, we're we're going to edit some code that we have. Um, no new pieces of code. I mean, no new uh, scripts, just uh, editing old scripts. So let's keep score. Like, uh, scoring is a big part of games, right? Um, and once you reach a certain score, it's nice to know that you won. Uh, so we're going to use a new object that we haven't seen yet called under uh, UI, under user interface, um, which is called the text object. So we're going to go in game object UI text, and we're going to canvas. Let's see. So game object UI text. And see this canvas here represents our screen. Let's see. Okay, let's zoom out. Oh, okay, it came in the wrong side. All right, but so let's take around. Okay, I'm still on the wrong side. Okay, I'm on the right side. Okay, so this once you navigate around, I'm I'm not the best at this navigation. This big object here. Yeah, there we go. That makes it easier. This represents the screen that the players see. So you get a big enough perspective. This is like you can think of this as the what the viewer sees uh, to, in two D. It's like always in front of the viewer. So if we click this new text object. And we drag it up. So you can see we can only drag this in two dimensions, not in three. Um, <clears throat> I think you might be able to get. It. You probably could actually draw it in multiple dimensions. But for let's let's it'll be convenient for us to have it up in the corner because that's a pretty nice spot to show the score. It's not right in the view or anything. Um, and you can see in game mode your your new text appears here. So. Um, now we want to go ahead and rename this. Oh, if you double click on it, that's handy. Okay, go zoom in on it. All right, so if we, uh, well, let's go ahead and rename this score so we don't lose track of 
what it is. And you'll see that actually this got categorized under Canvas here automatically, um, which is handy too. All right, so once now that we've got this Canvas uh, in our in our what well, is going to be uh, this text object that will be, will show our score, we've got it up in the corner here. Um, you can use the red and yellow arrows to help um, help navigate if it's giving you trouble. Um, and we're, we want to give this text the following attributes. So we want the font size to be 20. Nice and big. You can make it whatever you want. But, uh, I think that's actually the only change between what they're suggesting. That truncate. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and make the font size 20 to make it big. Uh, I think it's nice. All right. And then we want to open up this player move script. Uh, so that was back attached to. Well, we can go into the the assets, scripts, player move. When we double click that, wait a sec, and our editor will open up. <coughs> All right, so player move, I have to select the right tab here. Okay, so, uh, right. so we wanna go ahead and create a new variable, a private variable specifically. Uh, up here, private bar score, and then set it equal to zero. I think that's right. Count? Okay. I'm going to call it score because I like score better. Um, but count's fine. Um, whatever you want to call it. Private bar count or score equals zero. Semicolon. Don't forget the semicolon. And inside of our on trigger enter function, right? This makes sense because if we want our score to be, if we so we every time we pick up a cube, we want our score to go up. So that makes sense for us to increment the score uh, inside of our on trigger enter function. That's what's called when a cube gets hit. So. Um, We'll do it inside of this if other because you know we might add some other objects later that we want we don't want to increment the score inside of this function. So if the game object tag equals pickup, which means we've picked up one of our cubes, um, then we're going to say score equals uh, let's see plus equals one. That's a shortcut for writing score equals score plus one. Uh, all right, or you can write count plus equals uh, one, whether you score or count. That's all right, so that's all we need to do, right? Uh, we can get back to that in a second. So, oh yeah, okay, no, that's not. Our, that's actually not all we need to do. I take that back because all we've done here is created a private variable named score and started incrementing it. So. Our code knows what the score is, but that text object doesn't. The text object that we created has no idea what the score is. It doesn't know it's supposed to display the score. So we need to tell it. Um, so to start off, let's uh, create a new function um, called set count text. All right, outside of all of our existing functions, um, but inside the class function set, I'm going to call it set score text, open, close, open, curly brace, and inside, uh, all we are going to do is say count text dot text, count text is a variable that we haven't created yet, but we will, oh, score text, for me, text, Okay, score text dot text equals uh, score colon leave a space and then a uh, we're gonna add in uh, well, 
handling the score or the count. So if you see this here, it all all this function does is set it sets the score text. Um, so what we need to do is call this function. We'll call it right here. Set score text. Right. So now uh, inside of our you know, when when we pick up a cube, in you know that cube has a trigger. The trigger's triggered. It's a cube. Uh, we we set we send something to the debugger. We make the cube disappear. We increment our score, and we uh, just say, "Okay, score, update your text." All right. Now we still haven't told the object itself what you know what it needs to read, but all we need to do is actually make this. We we said score text dot text update yourself, but we we actually have to create this variable for. It. No, I don't think I did. Our score text uh, colon. This is our, you know, telling us what it is. U I dot. What is it? U uh, I dot text. U I dot text. All right. So this is just saying. Uh, all right. So we're creating a new variable. Uh, of type user interface dot text, which means it's a uh, it's a Unity component. Uh, we've created these Unity components before. We've created um, well, we've created vectors here. Uh, we've used rich bodies. Uh, we've created we use a similar format to declare floats. Uh, that's a basically a an a, a decimal point. Number, a number with a decimal point. Uh, you don't always have to declare it. For instance, here we're declaring, you know, speed is 100.0. Here, score is zero. Um, declaring a string, but you you do need to declare them when you use them in Unity. Um, so it's, it's just to refer to specifically to the unit to the things inside of Unity that we actually have to say explicitly what type of object this is. So uh, here we've said uh, all of the changes we've made. We said var count text uh, we, it is a object of type uh, user interface dot text uh, and we've created a local variable count. We increment the count and we call this function that we created set count text which updates this count text uh, text. Uh, or in you know all of those places, I replaced it with score. So <clears throat> that's uh, all comes together uh, to update everything that we'll need to update. Um, now I should mention you don't actually have to make this a new function, but uh, if you want to do more things with it later, then it becomes more useful. Um, but we'll get into that later if we end up getting into it. So the, we've almost got everything all put together. Um, there's one last step, and that is inside of our uh, inspector window for the sphere, we need to select this text object for count text. Um, let's go in here, select the sphere. Uh, this text object. Did I save? I probably didn't save. I just saved. Came back. There it goes. Um, score text. And then if we go to the score object here, we can set. Why do we do that? Oops. Oh, yeah, okay. We. This is right. So we need to go back to the sphere, and in where we're saying score text, um, we click. 
click this little dot here, and then we select our text thing here, score. So that's our that score is our text object. Now when we hit play, well, it should change, but oh, there's score is updated. So that's the first time score is updated. So we see here, what it still just says new text when we start off. So this is a good example of troubleshooting, right? Um, it's not, it doesn't change until we hit a cube. So we go into score and let's change this text from new text to score zero, right? Um, that'll get overwritten once we hit something or once we hit a box. So let's try that out. Hit play. And we see it says score zero. We hit a cube. Score equals one. Oh, I'm missing them two. All right. So it's working just like we expect. Three. And there we go. Uh, so, uh, Kevin, do you follow along? Gabe, you good? Any questions? No questions? All right. That's great. Um, that's not a problem, Gabe. All right. So, um, well, so we've got the score going, right? Uh, now we, that's, that's great. That's now we, now that we have a score, now we have something to measure against uh, to find out if we won or not, right? Um, so we need to actually you know, show that we've won once we win, and we have to define what winning even means in the first place. So uh, let's start off uh, pretty simple. We'll just get the mechanics working, and then we can make it more complicated. So let's start off with... Uh, well, we've already renamed text to score. Um, you can go ahead and do that if you like. Um, and then add a new UI, UI text object called win. So we'll go in here, game object, uh, UI text. And I'm going to rename it win. All right. And pull this. middle of the screen, right around here. All right, I'm going to make it a little bigger. Let's make it font size 30. Oops. Hmm. Maybe we need to make the size 30 we have to have the box actually be big enough apparently so um, this is a good spot to say something like you win exclamation mark I'll lose three because I'm really excited all right so um, that's what it's gonna look like so if you're happy with the placement then go ahead and delete the text um, because you don't want to see you win before you win, right? So it's got to start off with zero. Uh, oh, we can go through some more examples. Changing the color. All uh, right. Let's put win back in here and make the color. Uh, ooh, what color do we pick this? I'm going to go, let's go with red. All right. So. And we want to back that text back out. Okay. And uh, 
So this is going to be pretty simple. Compared to the last time, actually, uh, or even. So we're going to go into this here, write a new function, uh, the same player move uh, script that we were working in before. Function, we'll call it win. All right, set that up. And uh, what do we want to do? Well, maybe let's do it in a slightly easier order this time. Let's go var uh, win text colon ui dot not un ui dot text. All right. So this is our win text. Uh, now function win. We'll set the win text, right? Win text equals u1. Um, uh, the one exclamation mark and a smiley face because I like smiley faces. Okay, so put a semicolon in there, save, and we're almost there. We uh, created this function to do what we wanted to do when you, we went, but we still have to uh, call it, right, uh, to actually to set this text. So uh, we don't want this to be called the first time the trigger is entered, or the, the you know, this, if, all this. We only want to do it uh, when the score hits a certain amount, right? So we've got, or I, I have uh, eight prize cubes, so I'm going to say if uh, score is greater than seven, oh, you could probably say if score equals eight. Uh, I guess it's just convention, I don't know. Um, yeah, we might as well say it's more straightforward. If score equals eight, then we'll call win. And that's it. Um, so now every time we uh, pick up an object, we're going to check and see if we've actually picked up eight objects, and then we win. We win there. So, <coughs> so that's it. Gabe, I don't know what you're talking about. You got it working on motor vehicles, but that sounds exciting. It's got mechanics involved. <laughs> um, all right, so let's uh, let's test the script out. Um, just for the sake of time, though, uh, I'm going to say if the score equals four. Oh, you got an apprenticeship. That's great. Congratulations. Awesome. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's test this out. I'm going to lower the score requirements just for the sake of testing to four. Oh, compiler errors. Oh, no. Okay, let's make sure I got semicolons in here. Uh, when text UI is equal to UI text, I said if my right way got semicolons. When text dot text is what I forgot here. So. Uh, since this is a Unity UI element, you can't just set it equal to this string here. You have to set this property, text, .text uh, equal to the string. Uh, so we'll go ahead and save, and let's give it another shot. Another compiler error. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let me know if you see it. I guess I gotta, I'll go ahead and check with this code here. My function looks the same as that, I'm pretty sure. Function win, open close, parentheses, open close curly braces, win text, win text, dot text equals u1, semicolon. Okay, got that. Uh, if count plus five, open close. If score equals four, Oh, equals equals. That one always gets me. 
Okay. Back here. Run. All right. So rolling around. We just gotta get four to win. One, two, three, four. Oh no! No reference exception. Oh, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself again. Well, this is a, this is a good, uh, good example of troubleshooting because now we've got something called null reference exception, object reference not set to an instance of an object. So uh, when we called this win function, we said win text dot text equals u1, but right now win text dot text doesn't actually apply to anything because we never set it to anything, right? So we have to go back into this sphere object where we set our player move script, just like we did for questions, I mean, uh, score, for score text, uh, we have to set the win text to win. All right, so uh, if you didn't set it, then it's trying to set something imp, like some blank thing that is until something is set it's it's called null um, and so this win text pointed to nothing but you're trying to set text on nothing and so that throws an error um, so now we'll give it another shot roll around here and four you win all right so that game was pretty easy but uh, that's a good example of, um, so we've gone through two examples now of how you can set some text on the screen and kind of update it, uh, dynamically with code. Um, so let's go, let's go back. Oh yeah. So let's also, um, reset this so that you actually have to win to eight, right? Um, pick up all eight cubes, and uh, so now that we can win our game, uh, it'd be nice, oops, now that we can win our game, it'd be nice if we can lose as well, right? Um, or, well, we can go in, so, actually here we get some options. Um, we could lose, we could figure out how to lose the game, um, or build in a way to lose the game, kind of like a timer, um, which I think would be good because we haven't used any time objects yet. Um, if you like, I'm not going to go through this example, but you can color the walls to make sure you can always read the white text. Um, I'm just going to skip past that one because... Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. We've done, we've changed materials before. Um, you just need to drag the materials onto the walls. Uh, if you create prefabs, then you don't need to drag it onto each wall one at a time. But uh, if you don't, then you do. So, all right, let's lose. Um, we need a timer, right? So now we want to get all of these balls picked up, or all of these cubes picked up with their ball uh, in... A certain amount of time. I don't know what time we'll set that. We can set that dynamically later, right? Um, but we just want to want want to have that functionality, right? So uh, we've done this before. We need to know how much time is left. Um, so we go into game object, UI text, and let's set this time. What did I set it as? Time remaining. That's that's fine. Time remaining. All right. And let's go ahead and move this down. I'm gonna move this towards the bottom. Uh, well, it's nice to have everything close to the same spot. I'll put it right there. I'll keep it smaller too. All right. So, oops. Okay. Time remaining. And, um, well, 
it says in order to see all the text, you have to increase the width. It uh, looks like we might not, we probably won't have to. Um, but if you did, that's pretty easy. Uh, make it 200 or something like that. I'm going to keep it at 160 because that's plenty of space for me. Uh, I think they probably made the font size bigger, so that's why I had to do that. Anyways, however you get it to work like you like. Um, uh, as a tip, you can double click the canvas object to get a good view. Um, I'll show you an example. If you double click here, uh, it's a little far away, but you can zoom in on it and get a nice view of the canvas. All right, that's good to know. Uh, you can use the full screen game tab to get a good view of how the text will look. Um, or you can just look at this. But let's see. Uh, where is the full screen game tab? That, that would be nice to know where it is. Add tab? I don't remember. I haven't even changed my layout back to the default. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, you can just search online for that if you, if you want to know how to do that. Uh, or we can maximize on play. Uh, now that I've selected that, I hit play, it will maximize and we can really get the full game experience. Right? Okay. So that's, that's good enough. Get out of play mode. If you want to change properties during that, just unclick that button, and then you'll play in this small screen instead. But uh, it's pretty cool to see it maximized on play. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that. Now we want to go back to our player move script. Um, we'll create a new UI text bar time text e uh, colon UI, not UI int, UI, always want to autocorrect that. I don't know why. UI dot text. All right. So inside of our trigger, let's see. Yeah, here's showing you the, the syntax, which I think you probably already got by now. Var, variable name, colon, type. Uh, the type is UI, or, yeah, UI.text, the variable name you can set, whatever we want. And var is a keyword that tells us we're creating a variable, right? So, uh, we might as well go ahead and create another private variable called time limit. Um, that will tell us how long we have. So let's go ahead and do that. Private var time limit equals uh, 10.0. That'll be seconds, but we'll get to that in a bit. All right, so now that we've set a time limit of 10 seconds to complete this, uh, all we have to do is go into the update function because this is something, right, so we don't want this to update only, if we were to, if we were to click add this code uh, or update the time limit, and the time text, no, we're not updating the time. If we were to update the time text inside of the on trigger enter, it wouldn't keep updating as uh, just as we move around, which is what we expect. So instead, we need to go back to our update function and add this in here. Um, so we're gonna call, is they called theirs timer, I called mine time text. I guess timer is pretty nice. I'm going to stick with my convention. Time text equals uh, oop, time text dot text. I made that mistake last time. I'm not going to make it again. Uh, equals time remaining. That looks nice. Colon. Leave a space. And then uh, close your quote. Add a plus. And then we're going to do a math operation here. Uh, it's a very complex math operation called uh, subtraction. Time limit, which is our variable. Uh, so we want to show time limit, which is the maximum time, right? So uh, the way time works in Unity is it starts off at zero and it just counts up. Um, 
So, uh, uh, at, at the beginning of each game, our time is going to be zero to start off with, which means time limit is going to be 10, which is exactly what how many seconds are remaining as soon as we start. Um, once it hits zero, then uh, we'll run out of time, right? So, I mean, sorry, once time hits 10, then we'll, then time limit minus time will equal zero. So the way we get access to this time is calling time dot time, which is very creative naming. Uh, add the semicolon. Don't forget to close the parentheses and the semicolon. Um, so we've got plus open parentheses time limit minus time dot time. That tells us just what I was saying. It starts off at zero and counts up in seconds. Um, so now we know how much time's left, right? Uh, the, and this line gets updated constantly. Um, so time limit minus time dot time will display how much time is left. All right. Um, and we can't forget also to attach this UI object Go back to the sphere. Oh, gotta save. Then go back. Give it a sec to update. All right. Now we gotta set this time text to. Oh, I haven't renamed it. It's still text. Okay. Time. All right. So now we can see that time text equals time, which is the text object. It starts off equal to time remaining. And if we hit play, then, oh, look at that. We've got a countdown. Seven, six, five, four, three. Oh, no, we're not going to get them. What's going to happen? Oh, we get into negative time remaining. Okay, so that was fun. Uh, so how do we handle this? Um, once our timer hits the time limit, we want to add the game over screen. So... Uh, let's go find a game over screen together. Um, we can go to Google Images, Google, no, nope, not my calendar, google.com, just images, game over. All right, I particularly like, oh, which one? Uh, let's let's go with uh, some simple bricks. All right, I'm gonna click View Image, right click, Save Image As. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. All right, and let's go back here. All right, so oops, I'm gonna need that back. Okay. Um, well, I will need this out of the way for a sec. Okay, so on my desktop, I'm going to have to pause this for a second because I don't think I can see my desktop. I don't think either of us can see my desktop. Okay, now let's go back. All right. So on my desktop, I have saved this game over image. Uh, so let's go back to our assets. Uh, they probably want to have a name. Uh, well, okay. I'm going to create a new folder in assets. Create folder. Uh, images. All right. And I'm going to drag this game over image just straight into the assets folder. Into images. I'm going to double click. I can see that I have this game over asset. Uh, it's just the file that I downloaded straight off the internet. All right, that was pretty easy. And um, now we want to create a new UI element that's uh, of type raw image. We'll go to game object, UI. Instead of picking text, uh, we're going to do raw image. And you can see here that It's 
pretty, just a white piece of white, pretty plain. Um, but we want to make this width. Oops. I'll do this. Okay. I'm not sure if 300 is right. It looks a little big. Let's go with uh, 260. Oh, 265. Okay. That looks close enough. Alright. Height. Let's try 265. Nope. Height. 400. Almost. Let's try 380. It's probably a better way to do this. That's close enough. Okay. Did that, did that say copyright, Gabe? I missed that. It did? Okay. Well, I better not use that image. Okay, let's go ahead and delete that. And go back to Google. Uh, let's... let's uh, Let's, let's Google search free images. Free stock photos. Here's a good site. Now let's search game over. Good call, Gabe. Very good call. Okay. Well, our selection is not as good. But... <clears throat> Try to find one at least that's not copyright. Why can't I click here? Okay. Uh, game over. All right, let's see. Insert coin. View image. This one doesn't look copyrighted. It could be, don't get me wrong, but I'm not publishing this anywhere, so uh, it's all right for now. Save image as, save it to the desktop, uh, game dash over. I'm just going to overwrite that old file. Yes, okay. Um, it didn't explicitly tell me I couldn't use it, so it's not a good, a good motto for, I don't know game development, um, especially, but for for our purposes, it'll be just fine. Uh, we're, not, we're not publishing this anywhere. Uh, you definitely would want to make sure that you uh, aren't copywriting anything if you were doing this for real. Um, all right, so we've got this raw image here. Uh, I want to call it game over, and all I'm going to do is drag this, maybe that's not all I'm going to do. Alright, in the inspector window, assign it a texture of your game over image. Okay, yes, that's right. So, in this texture, we just want to click here, click game over, and that's it. There we, there we go. It's a little warped because I picked a really wide image, but... Uh, you guys can pick whatever image you want, right? So, um, we're nearly there. Um, we uh, we made it the right size. The only thing we haven't done is uh, make it work uh, programmatically, right? Um, this game over... Also, it's, it's just showing up in the middle of our screen. And it's taking over our whole screen. And we don't want to actually see it. Um, so uh, let's let's start off with the programming. Um, so we, we need to create this of our game over colon UI raw image. Okay, our game over screen uh, colon. 
UI. I don't know why it keeps on correcting this. UI dot raw image. Okay. Uh, so once the time reaches the time limit, if time is greater than time, if time is greater than the time limit, that means the game's over, right? So uh, inside of our update function, um, we'll just add this if uh, time dot time is greater than time limit, then. Um, we want to say game over screen dot enabled equals true dot enabled. So we're setting a property, uh, basically just enabling it. Uh, this enabled is just true or false. It's a boolean. Uh, we'll save that script and uh, oh, and and when equals false. That's a good point. Otherwise. When let's see, did we name it when? I don't know that we created the when, did we? Uh, well, we'll build that in in a sec. And and when equals equals false. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and create that variable var win equals false. We're, we're going to go ahead and set it to false. And then if the score equals 8, then we call our win function. Inside of this win, we'll go ahead and say uh, win equals true. Um, that way, that was fast, I know. I'll slow down a bit. So function inside of our win function, we're setting our, our variable win equal to true, uh, only, but that only happens once we've won, right? So if we haven't won, uh, let's make it, go ahead and make it private. Uh, we've set our private variable win equal to false, just initialize it as false. So uh, if time is greater than the time limit and we haven't won yet, then we set the gimmick game over screen enabled equals true, right? So let's save that. Um, and uh, so the first line of code, it, it didn't look like I was looking for that property here. Um, I didn't see uh, a place to set game over as enabled here, um, or as this disabled from the start. So we can just make our first line of code: uh, game over screen dot enabled equals false. Um, that will work just the same. So. Let's see, that was in our, where was that? Was that in? Do we have, I thought we ha we did have a, a start function. Um, well, we'll create it. All right, so uh, let's do things in order. Put start at the top. Uh, function start. Close. Oops. Okay. Uh, inside of the start, rather than setting win up here, um, just for uh, for clarity, um, we'll set win equals oops, win equals false right here. Um, this is just all the things we want to happen every time the game were to start. Um, it doesn't really matter whether you do this all at the same time. Um, we'll set uh, set count text um, and we'll set game over screen dot enabled uh, equals false. All right. So now what what we've actually done more than we thought here. Um, this set count text, right? We we had to change that here um, when we said score. That's the same as our score, right? Oh, I I did say count text. Let me change that to score text. 
All right, so here, um, I did say set the score to um, you know, score colon zero. Uh, and I said said that, but I could get rid of this, make it blank. And now it'll still say score. As soon as we start the game, it'll start off the way we want. Um, time remaining, we can get rid of that one too. That one's just uh, right in the update. Uh, that kind of takes away a little bit of clutter on our screen. Um, and so now when we hit play, let's see what happens. Oh, that's a shame. Game over comes right back. So game over screen dot enabled equals false. Now, what have we not done? We probably did not set that object. So we go back into the sphere where we have the player move script. We set our game over screen to game over, right? Um, unfortunately, this wasn't actually the full screen. So you just have to play around with that. Um, but as we see, we roll around, we try to collect all of these balls. I'm not even sure it's possible to get, a, get the way I've set it up in 10 seconds, but let's see how many I can get. Four. Game over. I lost, right? I guess they'll keep playing. And actually, this will be kind of fun, even though this is kind of a bug in our game, right? Once I hit all of these, it's kind of hard to tell if I've hit them or not, but once I have hit them, oh, if I could just get that one, I know we're out of time, so if you've got to go, that's all right. We probably are going to actually still win. Maybe not. Okay, we didn't win. Interesting. Um, I would have thought that would set win to yes, or yeah, win to yes, and then our condition wouldn't be true anymore, but maybe I uh, miscounted somewhere else on the number of balls or something. Anyways, uh, well, we've got, we've got our game working. Um, and if there are any other bugs, you can always, uh, kind of play around with that. Um, just to give you a couple of ideas, uh, for what you could do next. Um, let's see. Game over screen. Make sure we've got everything covered. Um, you give some power-ups. Um, these, these are more ideas. We're not going to go over these, but you could create some uh, a, a special prize that increases your speed. That would be pretty handy, right? Maybe we actually could finish if we hit our power up first. Um, let's see if there's any more. You could add some terrain. Um, you have to import a package for that. Um, that'll be that's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, but you could figure that out pretty easily, I think. Um, but gravity will be affected on your plane, on your terrain. Um, you can add some grass, some colors. Um, you can actually play in an environment like this, which would be really cool.